Hey everyone, how's it going? So, I've been looking forward to today, honestly, because this unit is definitely one of my favorite un units in the game. And especially this design of this unit and her kit and everything just seems very fun to me. So, I'm very looking forward to trying her out, talking about her kit and everything, because she just seems like a very fun unit. And honestly, more excited about this. It's been a while since there's been a new Last Claudia story type unit that's, you know, I've been looking forward to, but Arch being melee seems very good, we'll have a look at her in a second, so today we're going to be doing all the normal stuff, just looking at the units, talking about her, reviewing the unit and the arc, and current banners and what events going on right now. I think it's probably going to be a typical normal event and not much going on for the next two weeks, but you know, kind of expect that because there is going to be an anniversary coming up soon, so you may want to think about what you're going to be using your crystals on because we do get a few free summons for melee's banner even though it's only 15 singles so it's not that much but you could get lucky from that it's probably best to do that because anniversary coming up you probably get a lot of free stuff on that very soon so look forward to anniversary but today i want to talk about melee right now her kit and everything because she's very interesting to me i'm definitely going to be having a lot of fun messing around with her today because i have every skill learnt on melee already because she is this is a shift form of melee so i've already taught everything on her so let's have a look first then the stream may be a bit longer because i want to spend a bit more time trying her out because i'm pretty sure this time since she's a shift and i've got everything taught i should be able to get her to like level 110 or something or at least 100 and then just put all of my god relics and whatever in there Mother Souls. I should have materials, hopefully. Let's have a look. So, Arch being melee. Here's the unit. Looks amazing, by the way. I love this artwork, and I was hoping it was going to be melee because she's one of my favorite units in this game, and that pixel art, amazing. I like it a lot. Kind of reminds me of Advocate of God's Lily, who is probably my favorite design in this game, so this is definitely on my higher end of unit designs i think it's amazing very cool and it's kind of like when i was thinking when i saw the teaser image i was thinking it looks like a mix of melee plus the melee mare arc fused together and it, this is basically exactly what it is and i'm quite excited about this so she is a god type which is very important now i didn't check but i don't remember if melee was originally a god type or a soldier i should probably check that but she's a god type which is amazing for pvp because there aren't a lot of god type units and the couple that we have are like prefect of god Mia. and as you know she is a great unit in pvp still and she's been out for a very long time so here's hoping that she's going to be a pretty good pvp unit i'm really hoping so because i really want her to be like a meta type unit just so i have an excuse to put all my god relics into her and get her to plus 30 because i would like to do that so her stats, first of all, 11,000 HP is pretty nice, 2,000 strength, 1,600 defense, 1,500 mind. They are pretty good stats. Obviously low intelligence, but don't really need to care about that because she's going to be uh, doing a physical attack damage based off of strength all the time. Absolute resistances, she has minus 25 to fire, which is a bit strange. I mean, she is a light slash dark unit, and I guess they kind of needed to give her some weakness and minus 25 to fire can sometimes be an issue because claude is like probably the most meta unit we currently have in terms of he can be used everywhere and he's the main counter to guile that we have so a lot of people are trying to use fire type teams and especially with claude so that's just the one thing that i think about the most now one thing that i think is very cool with this unit as well well a lot of stuff with this unit but she's got resistance to every single ailment which just helps she doesn't have nil to any ailment but it's fine having resistance to every single ailment just makes it super easy to make her nil to an ailment because you can just put on one accessory which gives her plus one to all her ailments and that will be enough to make all of them at nil and even if you want nil plus one you can do that quite easily as well because you can put on that one accessory to increase all of them by plus one and then just put on the relevant skill like curse resist and then you'll have nil plus one for curse just easily so 
Her ailments are just very good, and I do like seeing that because there have been a couple units in the past that have had weakness to illness or something, and just not great ailments, but I like seeing this. It does remind me of Logia because he, I'm pretty sure he also had resistance to every ailment, which you don't usually see on these units. So let's get over to skills, which honestly, these are more interesting than a typical unit, and this is where... I start really liking this unit so much, and I may be a bit too happy about this unit, but it's fine. We'll see. So, skill 1 has probably way too many words, but it's fine. Scissor Tail. It's a medium area long range light attack around the target that launches enemies into the air. So, that is important. So, it is a long range attack. You can use her skill 1 from anywhere in the map, and she's going to be launching a light attack directly towards that enemy. And it should launch the enemy in the air, that's what it's saying here, so I like that a lot, and I think her skill 1 is going to be pretty amazing. All of her skills will be, but I like her skill 1 the most, it looks the most promising to me with the animation and hit counts. I didn't keep a note of the hit counts this time, but I might have a memory of it, we'll see, I think I do. Then it instantly closes the gap for a light combo attack, and it has a chance to give blind. So, there's a lot going on in this skill, but... It's still very simple. All it is is a long range attack. You can use it anywhere. And after that long range attack, it's then going to close the gap and teleport right into the enemy's face and then do another attack. That's basically all it is. Which I think is pretty pretty good and it's quite fast. It's probably going to be the skill that I'm going to see myself using most in PvP, honestly. I think spamming her skill one is going to be pretty effective. And it has a chance to give blind. Here we go. We have another ailment focused unit, and it's been ages since we've had one of these. Advocate of God Melee was a ailment unit, and she is decent, but the problem with her was her kit wasn't super amazing, and she never really fit into the meta super well. But on her release, she was a very strong unit, but she didn't last an incredibly long time just because I think her main focus of being a physical DPS was too much, and her ailments and debuffs and stuff. They were good, they just weren't as good as V, and you were much better off using V in that scenario in most cases, so Advocate of Melee did fall off a lot, but this Melee I'm hoping lasts a very long time, I'm really hoping so, but I'm pretty sure it should. So let's move on to skill 2. Skill 1 I believe is 9 hits if I remember, which is actually pretty good, and she's going to be dual wield obviously. Skill 2 is a charge and deal a frontal medium area light aerial combo attack so just a lot of words for saying it does a light combo attack and there's a chance to give it the exangrenate debuff so exangrenate i we've seen this debuff on a couple units like advocate of god melee obviously and probably a few others that have it as well but i don't remember at the moment it's a unique debuff which you can't it's not an ailment so you can't resist it really and it is it the effect of the debuff isn't really that much but what makes it good is usually the units when they have Exangonate. I'm just remembering one. Um, Rabala has Exangonate as well, I believe, on her magic, which is good. Basically, usually when a unit can inflict Exangonate, they have other skills and effects in their kit, which makes Exangonate good if you get that. So the Exangonate debuff itself doesn't do a whole lot. I think it just... Um, reduces the enemy's health whenever they use a skill or something like that if I'm remembering that right It doesn't do much, but the main effects are usually what the unit skills or traits have that boost the effect of it So when the enemy has Exangrenate then she's probably going to do more damage or something extra which There is some more stuff that we'll talk about later So skill 2 is quite important to remember that it can inflict Exangrenate because that debuff is quite important it's a very good debuff, and you should try to remember to inflict Exangrenate when you can. So, her skill 2, if I'm remembering, is about 15 hits. I think it's 15, which is okay. I, I'm remembering what I've seen so far is her skills are not super fast, but I'm not too worried about it. Obviously, her DPS is not going to be any, anything crazy, but she isn't a... DPS focus unit what she is focused on being is more of an ailment slash debuffer and she can do damage at the same time so she's not going to be focused on being a DPS for PvE content like heist DPS or anything but I believe she's going to have like a 
mid DPS, but sh should have at least good damage for PvP, I'm hoping. I really hope so. Skill 3 is another close the gap skill, which is great. We like seeing those. So now she's got a close the gap skill 1 and 2. Well, skill 1 and 3, I mean. Skill 2 doesn't have any close the gap, which kind of sucks. But it does have at least a little bit of range because, because it charges to the enemy. So, close the gap for a wide area light combo attack and it has a chance to give enemy illness and or curse, which is nice. So, you can inflict illness or curse and those two are quite in, quite good. There are a lot of ailments, basically every ailment in the game is somewhat useful. But I think the most useful ones are probably these four. So, illness, stun, curse and silence are the most annoying to deal with. The other two people usually just ignore because they're like not really a big deal. Poison has just been very underwhelming all the time. And blind is annoying but isn't really a big deal. So these four having a chance to inflict illness or curse. Just very good, you know. And especially if you can reduce their ailment resistances and have a chance to inflict illness or curse with their skills. I just think it'll be very good. It's gonna be great. So yeah. Those are her skills. Honestly, I'm more excited about this because they're not basic skills. They are kind of similar to Advocate of God Melee's skills in the sense of I'm pretty sure they have similar animations or at least they're quite similar and their effects are quite similar with inflicting elements and debuffs. So yeah, she is basically trying to be an improved version of Advocate of God Melee, which I think is fine. I think that's great. It's actually a good thing in my opinion because she was a great unit. But she could have been done better, and now this is her doing better. So, yeah, special blood scream, nice. It's a powerful light combo attack to one enemy. Okay, fine. And give exangonate is guaranteed. And be honest. So, it doesn't say there's a chance. It says it gives exangonate an illness. So it probably means it's guaranteed, unless they have resistance or nil, obviously, to illness. But the yeah, exangonate should be guaranteed, which is nice. So. I don't think her special is that crazy, obviously, but I do think it's useful because it has utility. It allows you to guarantee those Exanguinate debuff and illness as long as they don't have resistance to it. So I think it's an okay special. Obviously, if it was against all enemies, that would have been pretty strong because Exanguinate against every single enemy on the map would have been pretty, pretty strong and a lot better. But it's fine. Special is still okay nothing bad about it so yeah i do like these skills and one thing i want to mention is she is looking like a light damage dealer and i was literally thinking the other day we haven't had a light damage dealer in quite a while and i would like to see a light damage dealer now here we are with another melee couldn't be any more perfect than that so let's go over to the traits next which always get way more interesting so trait one is more focused on damage caps and damage so let's see damage cap to enemies with status ailments plus 20,000 that's quite important you got to make sure the enemy has a status ailment so if you're up against a boss which has nil to everything I don't think she's gonna perform very well against that boss but if the boss at least has some resistance or weakness to any ailment then she should be performing okay let's say the boss has resistance to poison well you can still reduce that by one and make it zero to poison and she should be able to inflict poison and get that damage cap boost so i think this is fine 20,000 damage cap against a lot of enemies it's usually quite easy to at least have one ailment especially if you can redu reduce their ailments from their ailment resistance from anula mouth and other other debuffs that she apparently has which is fun so, damage taken from enemies with stats at much minus 30%. This is great too, and I've always got to remember that a lot of, pretty much nobody defends against poison in Arena. So, if you're using a Nula Mouth and inflicting poison, then that enemy is going to be doing 30% less damage to her, and this is all damage. So, that sounds really good to me. If you have a reliable way to inflict poison or any ailment in PvP, then she's going to be taking 30% less damage from everything. So I still think she's definitely not going to be able to do very well against the counter units that we have, but that's expected from me. I think that isn't her main role, which is fine. 
I think probably her main role was against tanks and maybe other physical DPS units. We'll have to see how she performs there. When a light weapon is equipped, then light damage 30% and damage cap 20,000. And when using skills, there's a chance to give the targeted enemy a cut illness resistance debuff. So this is very important. This is amazing. And this is something that adds va even more value to her kit. So obviously the light damage and damage cap is fine. That's good. That's whatever. It's great to have that damage cap, especially for PvE. You're getting a lot of damage cap for a dual world unit. But the main thing here is there's a chance to give the targeted enemy an Ill cut illness resistance debuff. Now, this is a debuff. And that is why it's important. It's a debuff and the enemy cannot negate it, pretty much. So... There's a chance when you're using skills when you have a light weapon equipped to inflict that debuff. This will stack with Anula Mouth, which means we now have a way to reduce illness resistance by minus two instead of minus one. Anula Mouth reduces every ailment resistance by minus one, and then this illness resistance debuff can reduce it by another minus one. So now what we can do is if an enemy has illness nil resistance, you can now put on a Nula Mouth to reduce it to resistance, right? Plus one. And then you can inflict the illness resistance debuff. And now they got zero. So now we can go from nil to zero resistance from this unit, which is, is this. This can open up a few doors. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's illness. And there are a couple units that I'm thinking that I remember. Like, there are a couple units that have weakness to illness and will have an incredibly hard time being able to still have nil, nil to illness so also pretty much everyone on their tank they don't build for nil plus two they build for either nil or nil plus one so if they have nil plus one then that means a nula mouth will reduce it to nil and then this Ill illness resistance debuff will reduce it to res which will still give you a chance to inflict this to inflict illness on the enemy so this may be a problem or not a huge problem but just something to think about and be aware of because now we have ways to reduce illness resistance by even more and that is very important to think about on your tank units for pvp so that's the main thing i'm thinking of about right now Against bosses in PvE content, it isn't super important because a lot of them don't heal, but there are a couple bosses that I remember in the past that have healed, or at least have some healing, so it's kind of niche in PvE, but for PvP, yes, this can be amazing because, you know, being able to inflict illness on a tank is just kind of destroys that tank, you know, so this is going to be very good, especially helpful for you know, any type of tank that uses Rainical because that is healing and if they have illness then they can't heal from that arc so basically make that arc useless. So people may want to think about doing nil plus two because then you'll be able to defend against a melee now but that is a big if because I don't know how well she's going to perform yet and if people are even going to care about that because there might not be anyone using her but we'll have to see. I know I'm going to be using her, so just wait. I'm going to be using her very soon. <laughs> Looking forward to that. So, there's even more to this trait, though. So, when you have a dark weapon, then you get 30% dark damage and a 20,000 damage cap, which is a bit strange, but it makes sense because there is a skill in our kit which makes all of her skill attacks dark, which is pretty good. When using skills, there's a chance to give the targeted enemy a cut dark resistance debuff. So this is also amazing. Reason why is this is a unique debuff. The same thing as the illness resistance debuff. It's a unique debuff icon and it will stack with everything else. So this means this will stack with weakness and light circle, which is holy circle, which reduces dark resistance and anything else. So now we have another way to reduce dark resistance which is amazing what i'm thinking of is you can have one anima which reduces dark resistance by 20 and then you can have this dark resistance debuff which is going to be another 20 and then you inflict weakness which is another 20 and then you inflict holy circle which is another 20 
that's minus 80 dark resistance and that's just pretty crazy the fact that we can reach that is ridiculous but i know there are a couple bosses and a lot more bosses recently that have like stupid high resistance like 200 dark resistance for instance and they're still going to be you know doing zero damage but it's still incredibly useful especially in you know guild battles where reducing the enemy's resistance is important so then your mage is cast this may allow you know a more dark focused team for that which i'm looking forward to seeing that so yeah talked a lot about this trait one but honestly it is very good because of the two unique debuffs that she can inflict and you kind of must have a light and a dark weapon so you can't you are kind of limited on your weapon options but we will talk about that later once we get to equipment recommendations so let's move on to trait two Battle start in every 20 seconds, give all enemies a cut status ailment resistance debuff. So this is basically equivalent to Anula Mouth, and as you know, V has this in his kit, but only at the start of battle. He doesn't have any way to continuously inflict that debuff unless he casts it himself. So this is kind of a improved version of that, because it's on her trait, and she can inflict... Anula Mouth at the start of battle guaranteed against all enemies and then every 20 seconds she is going to inflict Anula Mouth again and that basically means there is a 100% uptime of Anula Mouth as long as she is alive in the team. Assuming that this Anula Mouth buff does last at least 20 seconds or more then it will be permanent uptime which is amazing because then you don't have to worry about casting it and I just think that's very good. That's amazing. And this will stack with other unique debuffs, which in her kit she has the cut illness resistance debuff. So this will stack with this because this should be the icon for a newer mouth. Well, obviously it will be. So when skill attacking enemies with the exanguinate debuff, there we go. Then there's a chance to inflict a ra random status element, which is blind, silence, curse, or illness. So it doesn't include poison and it doesn't include stun, which is weird, but I still think that's great because, think about it, there's an extra chance for you to inflict ailments, and the more ailments you can inflict, the better, because she's going to get more SET, and just thinking about that makes me more excited about this unit, but yeah, having, stacking a lot of skills to that have a chance to inflict an ailment is very good very good because they will stack with each other they don't like um increase the chance or anything but think of it as like let's say you have a three percent chance to inflict illness for instance and then you have the same like a different skill which does the same effect of three percent chance of inflicting illness well they're not going to do nothing like you have one they're gonna be kind of you know think of it as like having two rolls to do the same thing per hit there's a three percent chance but that's gonna roll twice that's kind of what i think of it as so i don't know what the percentage chance of this is but i still think this is very good because you have another way to inflict ailments and more, the more ailments the better you can't go wrong with that so this is very nice i do like this but you do got to remember that the exanguinate debuff is required to be able to inflict those ailments. So, using a skill 2 first may be something you might want to consider, but in PvP, maybe not as much. Still think it's pretty good though. Duration of debuffs from status ailments given by the unit slash active skills is plus 50%. So, ailments given inflicted by her will last 50% longer than usual which yeah at the end of the day that isn't a huge difference but in some cases that could be useful against bosses that may be useful but in pvp it kind of depends because the ailment usually lasts a while unless one of their units uses a cure all on that unit or some other some other buff to remove ailments 
and give two random beta basic stats ailments to the enemy that defeats the unit. I think this is great because there is, there is this effect on Skelly, his paid accessory, and like a robe or something that does this too. This isn't amazing, but I still think it's useful to have. Only for PvP, really. In PvE, it doesn't really matter too much about that because you're going to be doing physical attacks and inflicting ailments that way, but in the rare chance that you do die, then it has a chance to inflict two random basic stats ailments. So, this sounds very good to me so far. One thing about this, though, is I'm pretty sure she doesn't have any revive effects in her kit, so... It would have made sense if she had some kind of decoy or revive in this trait. You know, I think that would have been pretty good because that would have synergized very well with this. But I can't complain. I am really liking what I'm seeing so far. And we haven't even got into the skills yet, which usually has most of the kit. So skills are very nice. Skill 1 is about 9 hits, I believe. Skill 2 is about 15. Skill 3, I didn't mention it, but I believe it's 22. Special, I don't remember, but... It's, it's not really, she's not really going to be a special DPS unit, so don't really need to worry about that. So, very good skills and very good traits. I am quite excited so far because there are a lot of utility buffs that we are seeing in her kit already. A lot of debuffs, a lot of ailments. I love seeing that. Exanguinate, all the ailments basically, and the cut illness resistance debuff. And the cut dark resistance debuff, more ailments, exanguinate, auto anula mail for the battle start in every 20 seconds. There's just a lot of utility, and I like it a lot. It is very valuable, at least what I'm seeing so far. So let's have a look at these skills, and it gets even better. You, you know, it doesn't need to get better, but it does get better. So, we will start first with the anima. Yes, she has an anima, and it is very good. So, Despair Anima, all enemies light and dark resistance minus 20. This is amazing because, you know, I don't really need to say why, but being able to have a stackable debuff to reduce the enemy's resistance is just incredibly valuable. And as you know, certain units like Shift Eliza are still strong in PvP because she has that anima that reduces enemies' fire and light resistance by 20 which is the same kind of anima so this is amazing think about it this anima reduced light and dark resistance allows you to build a light or dark focus team and helps your mage like freya so having a dark mage in this team having a dark mage is going to be very viable now i mean freya was still a viable dark mage but she's going to be even more viable now because you can benefit from putting terra Melf skills on her to increase her damage even further and you can have this anima to reduce everyone's dark resistance and you can have weakness and holy circle and this cut dark resistance debuff which is like i said earlier it was minus 80 dark resistance so she can reduce the enemy's dark resistance by quite a lot in her kit yeah her anima's amazing it's just very good because it's stackable with other debuffs like weakness and holy circle and her debuff in her trait one so very exciting to me. I'm looking forward to trying out this unit. I've said that many times, but i just got to keep reminding you that. Attack up max, fighting spirit max, more strength and health is nice. Proud force, but she doesn't have any crit up skills. She doesn't have crit up 1, 2, or 3, or or even aimed vitals, but proud force is still useful to have for healing. Human buster. So, this one makes sense. I obviously mainly will have this because she's just kind of evil, but... Human Buster, Physical Attacks, Special Counter, Anti-Human Type Effect to Soldier Knight, Sniper, Sorcerer. Most enemies in PvP, well most units in PvP are a human type, apart from a couple. I'm not going to name them, but there are a couple that aren't. But Human Buster is just a incredibly focused PvP skill. And she's a god type with Human Buster. So... I just think this already sounds promising to me. Anti-type boost as well. Amazing. Love it. 
silence research here we go we get onto the research skills which as you know v has similar skills or at least some of the same skills silence research chance regular attacks chance to inflict silence chance to inflict stun which is an important one and chance to randomly inflict step status ailment so you have a chance to inflict silence stun and any random ailment as well as blind curse illness you know blind silence curse illness there's a lot of ways to inflict ailments in our kit and i just like it it's very cool i am hoping her normal attacks are good but obviously she's not going to have a long range normal attack there's just i haven't tried it yet don't tell me i'm gonna test it out later just don't spoil it she i know she doesn't have a long range normal attack because that'll be pretty strong but I'm hoping that her normal attacks are at least fast enough to make these research skills useful enough, you know. I will be trying that out later though in the unit test play quest when we try that later, which we will do. Auto Grand Brave, just very nice to have that. More strength, nothing wrong with that. Auto Critical and Auto Haste, just very nice to have. Her SCT, by the way, is going to be so amazing. You'll see why. So, Awaken 2, amazing. Because this will stack with Awaken 1 and Sorcery Awaken. Not the buffs, but the healing will stack. That's why I like stacking Awaken 1 and 2 and Sorcery Awaken. But it is quite expensive to do that, so you may not want to do that. But you could do that if you really want to. Ardor, even more critical rate, you know. That's pretty nice. So she does have some crit rate. She's got Critical and Ardor. Which is a bit of a weird selection of skills. Usually the unit would have like critical grab 3 or 2. But it's fine. Ardor and auto critical is still fine. Infinity Mega Drive is a new one. So light and dark, physical and special damage, 30% and the damage cap 2000. It's kind of like Infinity Drive. But obviously it's the Mega Drive in equivalent of it. Which is nice I think. And then Terra 2 is more damage to enemies with stats elements. And then Terra 3 is more damage and damage cap. Which can't go wrong with that. It's great. Dual wield makes sense. Advocate of God melee was dual wield as well. Pretty much every form of melee has been dual wield. Saintly melee also dual wield with an axe and something else. Uh, Advocate of God melee was two swords. But this arch being melee... Has sword as well, so you've got sword high boost and sword giga boost, which means you can put on sword mega boost if you've got that UR arc, which has it. Kind of sucks, I know. If you don't have it, it feels bad, but if you do have it, it feels great. She's also got axe giga boost, which is a weird one. She's got 25% more damage when you have an axe. So, let me stop here for a moment. The fact is, she has sword boost and axe boost skills. And if you remember, her trait 1 says that she wants to have a light weapon and a dark weapon. So ideally, you would want to have a light or dark sword and a light or dark axe. And at least have both elements. So you need to have light and dark. Which is very limited on options because I don't even know if we have a light or dark axe. I know we have probably a couple of swords but they're not that great. So actually there is a light saw there are a couple light swords i lied but dark swords not as many four axes though not like can't think of any in my head right now for those there's probably one dark axe you know you could go for a dark axe and a light sword that might be fine i'm just trying to remember what equipments we have but we'll look at that later but yes you are kind of stuck to only using a sword and an axe and specifically light and dark weapons but that doesn't stop you from using let's say trishula because trishula is a light machine weapon obviously you're going to be losing out on some of these weapon boosts here you could go with a sword and a machine that could still work but you're still going to lose out on this axe giga boost but you may want to consider doing something like that because Using Trishula could allow you to use her in more content. It's just something to think about. You could put on Trishula if you really want to instead of the axe. Maybe an easier option for most people to do that. So, Paranoia.
This one is a skill we don't see very often, but it's one of the best skills in the game, arguably, in my opinion. When give, giving a sta new status element to an enemy, then recovers a little SCT. It doesn't sound the great, that great, right? But it is amazing. So any time you inflict a status element, well, a new status element on an enemy, and then you get five seconds of SCT for every single skill, which is amazing. It's so good. And I love this skill so much. We rarely see it on units. The only units that have had this are obviously V, Melee, and Logia. That's all I can remember right now, but it's an amazing skill. And it has a chance to be incredibly good for PvP. If she is a good PvP unit, I really hope so, because I would love that to be the case. She's never really been a meta unit, honestly, but let's hope she is this time. Goddess Advocate is a skill we've seen on Advocate of God Melee, so it's not a new skill. But it is still a decent one. Chance to nullify critical attacks taken, which is okay. I do like that. And skill and special attacks have a chance to insta-kill. Obviously excluding bosses and arena and guild battles. Kind of equivalent to dead. Death God, you can stack this with Death God if you want to. But against normal enemies, she can insta-kill them. So it makes sense because her personality, obviously she's going to have something like this. Gash, this one's another ailment focus skill. Skill attacks on enemies with Exangonate have a chance to inflict illness. She's got a lot of ways to inflict illness, honestly. She doesn't have illness research, but ecology research and illness from one of her, her skill three, I believe, and something else, her special or something. But yeah, this is very nice. When an enemy has Exangonate, and just remember, Exangrenate is a debuff, so it can't be nullified, pretty much. Now we get on to the unique skills. Wow, there's so many. Look at this. This is great. There are so many unique skills on this unit, and I do like that, because it does make me, you know... It just allows you to put on more skills that the unit doesn't have, but allows you to stack the skills, you know... So like sharp eyes and stuff she doesn't have, but it's fine because she's got all these unique skills down here, which obviously you can't put on her because they are unique for her and not on a learnable arc. Let's see, Blood Soak Makeover. Skill attacks on enemies with Exangulate have a chance to absorb 7% of damage as HP. So one thing I want to say quickly is some of these skills are just improved versions of the same skills that Advocate of God Melee has. I might have a look at that in a moment. But this is a improved version of this, the same skill that Advocate God Melee has. So it's just the same, but a little bit better. And the same with this skill, Mortal Flesh. This is just an improvement of what Advocate God Melee's skill is. When skill or special attacking enemies with Exangulate debuff, then 5% more critical rate, which is great. And enemy defense minus 15% until damage. So that is a guaranteed minus 15% defense piercing effect and 5% critical rate as long as the enemy has Exangrenate. Very good. So in my opinion, I do prefer Blast Claudia, obviously because it's the main game I cover on the channel. I'm not really too into Grand Summoners, honestly. It's not really my type of game. I've tried it a couple of times, but Blast Claudia is just the perfect game for me. Artwork and everything. I just like it a lot. I still enjoy this game even though I've played it for years. It's just that kind of game which is always fun to me. Next skill, chance to nullify physical attack, damage taken. Nice. And if damage is nullified, chance to give the enemy blind. Quite funny. So if you're taking damage, you also have a chance to inflict blind. <laughs> it's quite funny. I like it. It's another way to inflict a status ailment, but not reliable, but it's still something. And having a chance to nullify physical damage taken is just useful in general. Archentification. Weird word, but I do know, obviously, it's turning her into an arch being. Anti-type damage taken from non-god type enemies minus 35%. Okay, so this is anti-type damage taken. So let's say a human enemy has god slayer then you're going to take 35% less damage from that attack. That's basically what it is. Which is kind of specific, but it is still helpful. 
anti-type damage to non-god-type enemies, plus 30% and damage cap 3000. Think about this though, this is more damage against human-type enemies. Because she has human buster, and obviously humans are not god-types, so 30% more damage to human enemies. And it's anti-type damage, so that means it has to be on your slayers. So that will currently only be her human slayers, so only human enemies. You could put on more slayers on her if you want to, like machine slayer or whatever if you want. But she's got human slayer, which is the most important one, arguably. Sang... I really don't want to say these words. Sang Cross Sinister Flood. Make skill and special attacks dark. So this skill you can just put on and off, if you leave it on then her skills are going to be dark so remember that, but if you remove it then her skills are going to be light. But just remember, if we're using her with all of her base skills equipped, she is not a light damage dealer even though her skills say they're light because of this skill that changes the element of her skills and specials to dark. So you may be confused why. You know, she's doing dark damage. Well, this is the reason, and this is very important. If you remember, there is another unit or a couple units that have had something similar to this. I'm pretty sure it was Adele, maybe, that could switch between fire and light. It is quite good, and we rarely get something like this, so I think this is quite valuable. Because that allows this unit to be more... have more build options and team options, because... Let's say her as a light damage dealer, for instance, falls off the meta a little bit. Well, maybe her dark attribute skills per performs better and you would rather do that. And that allows you to build her for dark instead. And then maybe in the future, her light attacks start being a bit better because we've had more light damage focus skills or something. Then you can switch her to light. It's just something I'm thinking about. It, it allows you to build her either against light or dark enemies that have light or dark weakness so i'd like this skill it there isn't much to it it's very simple but it does improve the unit's kit by quite a lot and allows you to uh, you know have more build options for this unit which i do like it's quite fun so chance for special attacks to deal critical damage sure and damage to enemies that are weak to light 20% and damage cap 4000 and then the same thing to dark so this is great i'm just thinking though no, damage to enemies weak to light and damage to enemies weak to dark yes so the reason why i'm saying that again is because this is all damage so all damage to enemies weak to light to plus 20 percent so it does not say that if you're hitting a weakness with light attribute it says if the enemy has a like weakness if they have weakness to light then you get 20% more damage and 4000 damage cap this implies that if the enemy has weakness to light and dark and she is currently using either light or dark skills she can only use one of them then she should get both bonuses here they should both stack together because the enemy has both weaknesses I know she can't be both elements but she should still get both of those bonuses because it says that it's all damage and all damage cap. So I do like this skill quite a lot. Allows you to stack, you know, more damage and damage cap. Modifiers, great. Love it. Very good. Nightmare Trio. So I thought this skill was quite interesting. Whenever you're giving an enemy a basic status ailment, poison dark. Probably shouldn't say dark. Poison, silence, curse, illness, stun and blind it's probably it should probably say blind instead of dark as a typo then boost attribute weakness attack slash critical attack slash anti-type damage damage 36 percent at max six times so basically this is a bit confusing but it boosts your weakness damage and your critical damage and your anti-type damage every time you inflict a status ailment on an enemy it doesn't say to that specific enemy. So I don't know if... It sounds like whenever you inflict a status element on anyone, then Melee herself is going to get the damage boost. 
but not against that one specific enemy, but against everyone. So she's just going to get more buffed as the battle goes on, basically. So these, to me, this sounds very good because if you're in longer battle or in guild battles, then if you're inflicting a bunch of ailments, at max you get plus 36% weakness damage and critical damage and anti-type damage. These should all stack together. Which is why I think it's very good. It's not just 36% of, you know, each of those and they don't stack up with each other. It should be, if you're hitting a weakness and you're doing a critical attack and you're doing an anti-type, you're hitting anti-type damage, you know, then it should be 36% three times because you're doing all three of those things. I think this skill's very good for damage, honestly, and it's stackable. Well, you can use it with other skills as a unique skill, so you can use it increase the damage even further. I like it a lot. It's a very good skill, mostly for PvP, honestly, but in PvE it can be good too if you're having trouble capping, it can help for more damage. I just think it's a pretty good one. And then the last one here, when taking physical attacks from an enemy, then there's a low chance to give that enemy exangulate. That's interesting. And damage taken from enemies with exangulate debuff minus 30%. Even more or less damage taken. Very nice. So if an enemy has a status ailment, then you're taking minus 30% damage. And if an enemy has the Exangrenate debuff, then she takes minus 30% less damage. Which is great. I like that a lot. So she takes minus 6% less damage from everything. And this is all damage. This won't make her tanky at all. But it's still going to help. And may help enough to survive a little bit longer in PvP to allow her to, you know, do more damage and potentially heal up. Hopefully. And then her Sixth Enhanced skills, more damage caps, great special damage cap and less magic damage taken. This is an amazing kit. I just got to say this right now. I am really happy with this kit. She has so much. She's bringing so much. With her kit, a lot of utility, a lot of unique debuffs and ailments. It's just so good. So, this unique anima, amazing. And then, Human Buster, research skills for ailments. You know, a lot of unique skills is the most important one of all. Is the fact that a lot of these skills can't be taught on a unit because they are unique to her. Or at least not currently a learnable skill like Awaken 2 is not learnable. What a Grand Brave. I think it might be learnable, but it's too expensive, so it's best that unit has it. Human Buster. Infinity Mega Drive is one that is not currently on an arc, so that is, you know... What you can do is, you can, if you're building her for a light damage dealer, for instance, then you can put on light drive, high drive, light attack raise 1, 2. That's like four skills there, just to increase her damage. Actually, we might even have light Mega Drive, so... Light drive, light high drive, light mega drive, light attack raise 1, 2. You can put all of those skills on her just to increase her light damage even further and probably do the same thing for dark. So, I like this. <laughs> a very good kit. Terra Mouth 1 isn't on her kit, but you can easily learn it on her. Completely fine. You can do that. You can even teach her sword boost and a sword mega boost if you have it. You can even teach her axe boost and high boost if you have those, which you should. And, you know, all of these skills down here are just unique skills, which pretty much every unit in the game doesn't have, apart from melee. So, she has a lot of unique skills, and if you manage to get her at high SC, then you should be able to make her super strong, because the fact that she has a lot of unique skills, you can just put on all of the SCT into full damage, like Sharp Eyes, and every type of skill, damage skill, that she doesn't currently have you can just stack on top of her and increase her damage by a ridiculous amount hopefully her skill damage modifiers are strong because if they are she should be hitting incredibly hard in pvp and will be very you know difficult to go against because she may be a issue she may be pretty strong i'm hoping so that's what i'm really hoping so because she's a great unit but yeah that's what I'm going to say about her skills. They are just incredibly good skills. I like this kit. This is a more interesting kit. This is probably one of the best, more, the best, most interesting unit they've released in a long time, in my opinion. I'm a bit biased because I like Melee so much. She is a great unit design. 
that is why I like her up so much because the design of this unit, top notch, my opinion, traits, everything, everything about this unit is just perfect. I like it. Hopefully, with the testing, it turns out true that she ends up being a good unit with higher modifiers. Because if she doesn't have good damage modifiers on her skills, I'll be a bit disappointed. But hopefully it's fine. We'll have to see how it performs. But yeah. This is definitely one of the better units. Well, we have had a lot of good units recently. And basically any new unit it has been strong at some point. Or at least at something. But this isn't on the level of counter units. But I tell you why that's a good thing. Counter units shouldn't exist because counter units just break the meta. They Counter units broke the meta on PvP in this game. So I am glad that they are kind of leaning a bit further away from counter units, at least. A couple of the units recently. Yeah, double gems is great. So I'm going to be leaving her there for the moment. We will be coming back soon, very soon. Let's have a look at the arc next. Now, look at this arc. It's an SSR arc. I know. I'm surprised too. It's been months since we've had this uh, SSR arc released in this game. It's been an incredibly long time since we've had an SSR arc. I was expecting it to be a UR arc, but I'm glad it's not. Because that would have sucked, having a UR arc. But I know why they are not releasing a UR arc. Because they're going to be releasing UR arcs for the anniversary coming up soon. That's a given. Obviously that's going to happen. There's definitely going to be a UR arc or two in the anniversary. Obviously they're doing that. Wouldn't surprise me. But I'm glad they at least released an SSR arc. But SSR arcs needs to be more common. So the trait on this arc. Damage to enemies with status elements plus 35%. Okay. When flinching, physical attack damage taken minus 20%. Sure, why not? Continuous regeneration effect. And boost recovery magic power by 30%. This one is a weird trait. Because the boost recovery magic power by 30% literally does nothing for melee. Because she doesn't have any way, any god heal or any healing magic. Which is strange. But it does have the more damage to enemies with status ailments. So it's like, it's trying to be for melee. But not at the same time. I don't think I would ever want to use this arc trait. But now I'm thinking about it. It's all damage to enemies with status elements. So you could put this on a mage if you really want to. Which could be not bad. So I think it's an okay trait. Obviously it's nothing crazy. But maybe you could use this if you're building a ailment focused team. I think it could be pretty good. Because it's all damage to enemies with a status ailment. So every damage, all your damage. I think that's great. Very good. So, let's have a look at the learnable skills, which is probably the main thing that I think is good here. So, Revenge Virus, chance to give illness to the enemy that defeats the unit. You know, this would be pretty good on like a Skelly or any type of revive unit or something. I think that could be pretty funny. Fast Holy Wall, and then we literally have Naked Mind, which is a funny name. When no armor is equipped, then 20% more mind. This is kind of equivalent to the skill that Garland has, which does the same but increases defense instead of mind. It's basically equivalent to that. For ASC, I don't think I would use it, honestly. I just think it's a bit expensive for ASC. You're getting 20% mind. Obviously, it's stackable, so it could be okay. Maybe in some cases it could be good, but I don't know at the moment. And Magic Weak Point Shield, I think this will be a good one. I think this will be great. I like this skill. When taking Attribute Weakness Magic, then damage taken minus 20%. reason why this is good is Guild Battles, most of the time people use Mages, or at least one. And you want to reduce the enemy's resistance, and then that allows your Mage to cast... So, for that reason, most of the time when that attacking, when that person is attacking your fort, usually when they cast a magic attack, it's going to be because the enemy is weak to that element. 
so I think this skill will be incredibly useful for guild battles on your forts and putting them on your tank units and Renner and any type of support unit or anything that you want to be a tank stall, you know, I think this will be a nice skill to use because it's a new skill. So yeah, decent learnable skills, nothing crazy though. Yeah, I've played Last Claudia ever since it released. Well, pretty much, I tried to. It wasn't available in my country when it came out, but I found a way around it and, and used an APK instead. Accessory, MP and Mind. HP recovery from units, active skills 10% and mind 5%. Give illness resistance as well. I don't really like this accessory too much because the trait isn't that great. 5% mind is like not much. 10% more HP recovery from active skills is still not much. If this trait was better, it could have been a good accessory because it has resistance to illness and the stats are okay because 50 MP on an accessory is pretty okay and the mind is okay. So. I probably wouldn't use this just because the trait is not very good. So, yeah, SSR arc isn't really too much to say about it. Obviously, you don't want to be pulling for it because it's an SSR arc. And Adis knows this. That's why they don't release SSR arcs that much anymore. But if you do get it, I think it will be a decent arc to have because Magic Weak Point Shield will be very good if you care about guild battles at all. You should make sure to use this for guild battles I think or maybe even arena it's more of a pvp focused skill but if you don't care about pvp then this arc doesn't really benefit you much so I wouldn't worry about this arc at all if you're pulling on this banner obviously it's going to be for melee this is the main prize of the banner if you're pulling on this banner definitely want to try and get melee if you get the arc you're going to be sad for sure but it's still an okay arc it's not completely useless it still has some useful skills and I think it would be nice to have but melee is definitely the main thing you would want to try to get so now let's have a look at treading space well Last Claudia is still a fun game to me and what makes it more fun is doing these streams and talking about it you know and the strategy with guild battles and arena and probably the community helps because if it was just me playing this solo, obviously I'd probably get burnt out more. But since there is a community, it does make the game more fun to me. So, that's just me. It's happened with a previous game I played before this where the community was fun. And I like talking to them, so that's why I stick with the game, even though it wasn't actually fun to me at the time anymore. Because I played it for so many years, I didn't enjoy it anymore, but I only stuck around for the community. But I still enjoy this. Yeah, the art in this game is definitely my favourite art in all of phone games ever. So, let's have a look at Melee's paid equipment. Obviously, she's got two weapons. First weapon is a Light Axe. At Max Enhancement, it's 320 strength. Pretty good. So, damage 30% and damage cap 3000 to enemies with status ailments so this is pretty easy to achieve because this is any status ailment and this is all damage and damage cap so this will apply to your special and your physical attacks it doesn't matter if using light or dark you're still going to get that boost i like it a lot very nice part of the trait already and she's dual wield so she's going to benefit from that damage cap quite a lot regular attacks have a chance to inflict the exanguinate debuff and physical attacks have a chance to give silence this makes this weapon even better and the main reason why this weapon is very good because having a chance for your regular attacks will give exanguinate exanguinate is a important debuff in her kit so having an extra chance having another way to inflict exanguinate very good i like that a lot and having a chance for your physical attacks to inflict silence just another way to inflict a status ailment i like this weapon and I'm going to tell you before I even mention the other weapon that I'm going to be getting both of these guaranteed. There's no question about it. I'm going to get both because she's the unit I like so much and these weapons are just very good. Very good axe. And since we don't have many light or dark axes in the game, this is definitely going to be our best in slot axe for sure. Now the sword is a dark sword. The stats on this one are not as high, but it's okay. So... Light slash dark damage 20%, okay, 
and damage cap 2000. Okay, so that is special and physical. Any light or dark damage that she does, it's going to get 20% more damage. And damage cap 2000. So if you have both of her page, then you get 5000 damage cap, which is a lot for a PvE unit when you're using her in that PvE content. Critical rate 5%. That's just critical rate 5% all the time. Love that. Because we don't have many ways to increase critical rate apart from the couple skills, critical rate up skills, and Ardor and skills like that, and a couple weapons like bows. Now, the final part of this weapon makes this weapon a million times better, in my opinion. When giving a status ailment, well, when giving an enemy a new status ailment, Restore one skills SCT by five seconds. So this is like a mini paranoia built in to the weapon. And she also has paranoia. It's amazing because the amount of SCT you can get from this is pretty crazy. I know it's only one skill, so it's RNG. You've got to get lucky to hopefully get the skill three or something, but it's still amazing. There are like six ailments in the game so this can apply six times per enemy which is 30 seconds of SCT randomly for any of your skills so I like this sword as well the five seconds of SCT is what really makes this better but which one would I prefer getting if I were to choose one of them honestly I think if you were to choose one the axe is a better option but it really depends on what build you're thinking of building her. Because for an axe, we don't have many axe options. So this one is going to be the better option because you could put on a sword easily enough. If you have a dark sword, then you're probably best to get this axe, I think. And it is still an amazing axe. They are both amazing. So... I would definitely recommend the axe first, I think. Chance to give Exangonate debuff and silence and the damage to accept damage and 3000 damage cap to ailments. I do think the axe is a bit better, but what makes this sword good is the 5 seconds of SCT. The critical rate is nice, damage is nice, but the damage and damage cap is lower on this weapon than this axe, and this axe also has more strength than the sword. So. This axe I do think is a bit better, but the sword is also very good, so I think if you can try and get both, but if you don't, it doesn't matter because she's still an amazing unit by herself. It's just these weapons make her even better. You don't need to, but I really want to. If you're going to choose one, definitely get the axe, but don't pick one yet. I would recommend to check your equipments first because you may have a decent axe or a sword or something and that kind of may force you to try and get one instead of the other one but i do think getting this axe is probably the better option you should probably get this one first but they're both very solid weapons i'm definitely going to be getting both of those very soon so yeah good paid equipments they are very strong and very similar to what advocate of god melee's paid equipments were so Let's do summons in a second then. I just want to quickly have a look at this melee. So Advocate God melee was a god type obviously. And Saintly was a god type. So she's always been a god type which makes sense to me. And her paid equipments were both swords on this. They are kind of similar. Chance for regular attacks give exangulate. Chance for physical attacks to give poison. This sword is very similar to the arch being melee's paid axe but the paid axe is better than this one because this is just like an older unit and this one is kind of like an improved you know they are both like improved these are both worse versions of the arch being melee so my plan today is a bit of a different one i'm going to be getting melee no matter what happens as a given it's obviously going to happen but I'm going to be summoning on the step gacha until we get enough credentials for both paid equipments. And then we'll see if we have her. If we don't, 
then we're probably going to do a couple free crystals and hopefully get her. I might have to pity her in the step gacha, which I'm willing to do, but I'm hoping it doesn't come down to that. We'll have to see what happens, but let's go start doing the step gacha first, because I need her paid equipments. I think both paid equipments, I definitely need both of those, because I see myself using her a lot. First pull is probably not going to be anything. There is a Thuria with everyone showing up, but it's only a blue, so I think it's going to be staying a blue or gold, because there's only two pulls in this. One animation, it's definitely going to be gold. There's no way there's a red in here, right? Probably not. Three animations is not guaranteed because there's only two singles here. Yeah. Uh, two pulls. If that was on a temple or something, it probably would have been a red, but I'm pretty sure in the past I've had the same scenario where there's three animations with a blue and three red, but there was nothing in there. It's just sad. I'm really hoping we get melee as soon as possible because I don't want to pity, but I will if I have to. Be a, be a gold. It's a blue. Well, there's nothing in here. I'm um, gonna skip. Yeah, didn't expect anything from that one. We do get a couple free singles, so make sure to do those. That's what I recommend. I wouldn't recommend pulling on this banner yet because there is 28 days left. I'm just doing this because it's like my favorite unit right now. Zekas, don't be a blue again. It's a blue, okay. This one's also a nothing. I might as well watch it just in case, but... One... Two... That's just gonna be a gold, yeah. It's gonna be a gold. Oh, there's a red. I don't think it will go up to red. We need more reds. We need something new. We need a unit. Obviously not a unit yet, but... We need to get melee. But here's the problem, is there's a couple things we're missing. We're missing Melee and the Ark, and we're also missing Logia. Shift Logia is now being added to the standard banner pools of units. So, there's a chance if we get something new, then it's probably not going to be Melee. Knowing the game being a troll, it's probably not going to give Melee on the first new thing we get. Three is good, a Gold is good. But there's no Zekus, but maybe this is enough, hopefully. I'm gonna guess two animations is enough. If there's one or zero, I'm not hopeful for this pull at all. Zero, one, maybe. There is one, okay. Unit for anniversary, well if you remember, Megius, just another dupe. Megius is supposed to have a shift form soon because of the poll that happened a while ago so uh, if some people are thinking it could be shift megius for anniversary which would make a lot of sense but i don't really know like the anniversary has already started for me because melee is like the perfect unit for me can't get any better than that a blue that this one's a terrible pull there's not going to be anything in this but i'm going to watch it anyway just because i'm not going to skip but there's Probably not a red, it's like, the small chance, oh there is one, okay, still haven't had an extra animation in a while, it's probably only one, yeah, at the bottom, please be new, it's probably not though, yeah, still nothing new yet, which is fine, it's not fine, but it is what it is, so I have like 20 or something credentials right now, still need to do some more, I might pity her, I'm thinking about it, it really depends on what happens. Thuria is a good sign. Gold is a good sign. Zekus and Thuria. Please be two animations. One. Two. Should be a red, right? There has to be one red at least. Like, there's no way. Yeah, I was thinking. There is an extra animation for once. It's in a unit. You know, this could be melee. That would be perfect, but I highly doubt it. There is a chance that if it's new, it could be Logia, and I'll be so sad. But it's obviously going to be a dupe. We did have pretty good luck with the um, Attack on Titan collab, so I can't really complain yet. Let me just check how many we've got so far. Yeah, dupe city is always the case. We got 31. 
So two more temples, and then we'll have the credentials we need. And then I do want to use a couple free crystals just because it's better that way than having to pity. So please be good in this pool. The rear, okay. That's good. That is okay, but could be better. Needs animations. If there's no animations, there's no reds. Pretty much a given at this point. One is a maybe, but two should be a red. There should be one. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be for a second. There's an arc. Okay, that's not too bad. As long as it's a new one. Or there's two reds. There's always a chance that you get two reds. Not this one. Obviously. Obviously. You know what's funny? I've seen that arc today already. It's the second time we've got the same arc for stock, right? I really doubt that we're going to get lucky today. This is what it seems like so far. This is the last temple with paid crystals for the moment. I could pity and I'm really considering it, but I'm hoping we get her early. The rear's good. That is good. That's good. Looking good. I'm not going to be trolled. I told you. Happened before. That's happened. Looks promising, and then you're like, no, animations. Yeah, it's all down to animations. So we have all the credentials we need. Yeah, a few paid pools for SC. I could, but like, do I need to? Because I've got the God Relics prisms to get her at plus 30 already, so it's not like I need the dupes or anything. So, I'm gonna go with three crystals for the moment, because I would like to try and get her, like, right now, and then we'll stop as soon as we pull her, but we really gotta see how it goes, because I don't want to waste too many free crystals. May have to come down to pity, a blues, this one's, I don't know what to say about this one, it was probably bad, but I just went and see. One is not enough. That's not enough. There's a small chance for red, but it's obviously not going to happen because when there's a gold showing up, usually feels more lucky than a blue. You rarely get a red that shows up right at the beginning. This this one's a bad pull. Well, it looks like we've got no reds. I'm gonna watch it just because. Okay, well, there you go. We're looking for units and new things. New, please, something, one thing at least new. You can't give so many dupes. And there was literally only arcs in that pool. We don't need arcs. I'm gonna have to skip this one. Yeah, there's nothing in this one. Yeah, I think I'm trying to play smart. And the smart thing to do is not waste your free crystals. And just go straight to the step gatch it's a pity, because otherwise you're just wasting so many free crystals. This one's going to be bad too, I can't feel it. Yeah, bad luck today, but could change. Two is three animations, should be a red, but it's not guaranteed. There is one. This a unit. Come on. We need it to be a melee. Don't be a log yet, because I'll be very incredibly sad, disappointed. Obviously going to be a dupe of something we've already got many times. I'm going to do one more. And I'm just going to see how many we've done. Because I don't know. I don't count. The rear. The gold is good. But not all the time. It's always dependent on animations. Zero is not enough. One is probably not enough either. Two should be enough. There's a red. Come on, melee. You need to come now. <coughs> Probably not. Hey, look, dupe. Wow. How can I expect that? Yeah, I can't be frustrated because I don't really get super annoyed with these things, but... I try not to, at least. But whatever happens, I already know I'm going to get her, so... Yeah. I'm just thinking, could I... 
should I do step catcher or free crystals is the thing I don't know. Obviously, pitting the arc is the most stupidest thing you could ever do, so never do that. Pitting an SSR arc is like a stupid. Never do that. I might as well get both of these now while I'm here because I really like these. Great. And you know, done like 110. The arc is okay. It's just obviously not worth pity. It's worth having, just not worth pulling for, you know. It's got some okay learnables. I'll do Step Gatcher again. At least two more temples. Yeah, I could do free crystals, but like... Gold, okay. This one's promising, but I'm not going to be trolled a second time today. I wasn't trolled the first time, but it was bad. Has to be at least two animations to make me feel like this should be a red. One. Two. Should be a red. There is a red. There's a unit. Well, it doesn't mean anything when you're me. Or when you're doing pulls in this game, because the unit animation is just a, another dupe added to the list. You know, that's a DOH unit I can't complain about. I can't complain. I'm gonna complain. I'm complaining. So, lap 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And then I could get her guaranteed. I don't really want to do that, but I will if I have to. It's what I always say. Zekus, nobody likes you. I'm not watching you. I'm just trying to think of what the smarter play to do is right now. I already know I'm probably going to have to pity, but... The smartest way to do that is... I don't know yet. I need as many prisms as possible, but... I think the smart way is definitely the step gacha instead of free crystals, because free crystals would end up being a hundred... And 20 more. Well, technically 118. But, yeah. Using... Doing 120 pulls with 3 crystals... Is probably not worth it. I would probably say it's better off doing the step gacha just to get it finished off earlier. That's at least what I think at the moment. Because... That would be like 36,000... Three crystals. Don't want to do that. So I'm going to finish up the step gacha now. I think. And then we'll stop. It's definitely the smarter play. But you know. I did have great luck recently. So kind of expected this to happen at least soon. From now on, well, from the rest of the pools, I literally expect nothing new, so surprise me at this point. Please be two reds in this one, so then one of them can be melee. You won't do it though, will you? Of course not. Well, I don't care about the arc animations anymore. That's just to... Uh, don't care about that. Ignore that. Yeah, I've had that happen couple times but can't do much about that sometimes you think there's a ADIS employee just watching in the background like I'm gonna press this button just to disable his good luck pulls and prevent the unit from showing up I'm gonna skip no I'm not I should have skipped never mind there's one please be more than one like geez these pools are terrible. That's not what I wanted, really. I don't use her anymore. If that was someone that didn't have her, they'll probably be happy, but not me. Yeah, let's get this finished then. 
definitely the smarter way to do it like this. I don't know. Gacha is all just random, so nothing. I'm not even going to watch because I already know. Last pulls are guaranteed melee, so they go. Then we're done. Not the best, obviously terrible pulls, but I'm not going to be complaining. I'm still going to be enjoying her today, so we'll move on to that soon. Could have gone better though, but my luck with the Attack on Titan collab was pretty great. Obviously we know what's in this pool. There's a guaranteed melee at the bottom. If there's anything else, then surprise me. But don't really. Don't do that. Obviously only one. Well, you know what that's going to be, don't you? There you go. I can't be happy about this, but I still like the artwork a lot. Okay, well, that's done. At least we don't have to waste more crystals on a banner. I hate pulling sometimes. Like, I don't like gacha, but... have to deal with it so let's just have a look at trading space then while we're while we're here I can get two more prisms wow I, I'm probably gonna be using most of my prisms on her if I'm honest I'm not getting to 200 just I'm not doing that I'm gonna get this prism instead because putting an SSR arc is stupid so never do that and then the rest can be used on Crimson Ore. Because that's it. Visionary Radiance should be able to farm that. Some stages and events. The events, you can get most of the materials there. I could do one temple and get another prism, but I'm not worrying about that. I'm just gonna save. I don't want to do more summons if I don't have to, so. 15 of those Emily has four at the moment. Okay. Definitely considering a plus 30 on this unit. Have to see. Great. Now I can spend this time to move over to Steam version. Her hair turned white. Just something I notice. Um, okay. Stop doing that. Let's open the Steam version now. And then I will... Here's the interesting part. I want to build her. And then... I want to start testing her out in PvE first, but what I want to do today is also try her out in Arena, because I don't usually do that, but considering she's a shift and a unit I like so much, I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be using her in Arena today later. But for now, let's start learning skills then I guess. Which is always the most boring part. I think my plan is definitely to see her performance first before using any of those god relic prisms. Definitely the smart way to do that. What's her ward? Let me guess. Axe equip physical damage cap 100. Sure. That's uh, okay, I guess. It's fine. I still need the unlock all button. Where is it? I need it. 
I did try and farm a few materials the other day because I didn't have many. I mean, I have some, but not a whole lot. Yeah, well, a funny thing is um, Advocate of God Lily uses an axe. Which is funny because she's a sorcerer, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's fine. I have been using Advocate of God Lily recently for story and stuff because I've still been lazy with story just because I don't want to finish it because I like story the most and I don't want to have no story content left because it's great. Archentification, arch being, so she turned into an arch being, merged with march being. Yeah, unlock all button. We need to complain and say, I'm wasting my time pressing these buttons when I could just press one button and be done with everything. Less buttons the better. Quality of life updates, always nice. Maybe anniversary, who knows. Anniversary usually, usually has a lot of stuff, but I don't like how they wait on the updates until anniversary. Like, I get it. But you could just do some of those updates like now, which would be fine. If they're quality of life updates, you can just do it now. There's just no reason to wait. Grand anniversary. I think that's everything. Yeah, probably the fastest I've done that. Enhance. Then we get the rest of the skills. Limits, no such thing for someone as beloved by Lady Lillahar is me. Sure, no limits. Sure seems like it. It's pixel art. Pixel art is probably one of the larger sprites that we have. It's definitely going to look pretty large in the game. It's going to be nice. Let's get the rest of the skills in here. And then we'll have a look at equipment, which will be interesting, because I don't entirely remember the equipments we have available. Yeah, Lelouch, he's pretty big too. Character sprite. We do have a couple, like Lagrain is just a big sprite in general. I think Advocate of God Lily, one of the biggest sprites too. Murren. They're all big units. It's nice to see. Here we go. So. I'm going to leave that there for the moment, I think. Actually, I'm going to use those. Just to save time. Because I do want this right now. Tell you how invested I am in this unit. I'm going to be getting Sick Enhanced stuff if I can. I don't remember. I don't think I got the Sick Enhanced materials I needed. I should have remembered to do that. But I didn't remember. Well, I can do that easily. Maybe. Actually, I'm running low on purple books for some reason. So, let's have a look at recommended equipment now. So, she can only equip sword, axe, claw... No idea why claw, but there is at least one claw that I think is good. Well, there's a couple good claws, so I guess that makes sense somewhat. So, definitely paid equipment is going to be the best, but if you don't have that, I want to check other weapon options. So, light and dark, you definitely want to try and use light and dark weapons. So, for the moment, let's have a look at swords and axes because they're the better ones that you kind of need 
we do have yeah i mean you could remove the axe arguably because you don't really need the axe losing out on axe giga boost is okay depending on what other weapon is so we do have a couple light sword options so we are fine with light sword options yeah venno is pretty good one to use anything for light damage will be very nice this one is a dark sword but it's just not that great i wish it was better this one's very nice hitting weakness but yeah there isn't too many dark sword options there's only a couple but they're not that great the best sword options we have are light swords you do want a light or dark weapon that's why i'm looking at only those obviously you could put on muramasa but if you have a light sword like this one you're better off using this one for sure and anything else um i mean it's okay but i wouldn't really want to use it these you could if you want but it's not that great this one is okay I think you could use this actually it's a decent sword a dark sword option so you could use that one but it is against sniper type damage obviously I'm gonna be using that for axes we don't really have that many free-to-play dark or light axes so that's a problem a little bit of a problem this one actually pretty good if you've got this i don't remember where it's from but this one's pretty nice you could use this dark axe on her if you've got it and then your second weapon can be a light sword which we do have a couple of light sword options so that would probably be a good idea if i was doing a free-to-play build i would probably go with this axe with a light sword and that light sword will probably be this one for pve and maybe this one for pvp maybe log is event yeah i don't really remember because there's so many events and event weapons it's a decent weapon honestly so you could use it But yeah, I'm definitely going to be using her paids. But there are other options. Like you could put on Trishla if you really want to. Because Trishla is a light weapon. So if you need a light weapon slot, you could just put on Trishla plus a dark weapon. If you really want to. But make sure you at least have a dark a sword. Because she has sword high boost. And sword giga boost which is quite a lot of damage it's like 60 percent damage and some damage cap and even more damage from the sword trait so i do highly recommend to at least have one sword and then the second weapon really depends on what you want her to be and what content you're using her in but these two weapons her two pages are definitely her best in slot but you don't need them because there are a couple other options like the ones i've showed already i would definitely want to use a dark axe plus a light sword which we don't have many options of, but if you do have those, then great. Let's quickly have a look at a claw, because there is a couple options for claws. Like, you could put on Venocle, which is, like, probably the only claw you would want to use on melee is this claw. Because it's dark, and 50% more damage to poison enemies, so it's a pretty good one, and it makes sense that you'd want to use that. Now, a mill heads is good, I know, four ailments is good, but it is no attribute, so I wouldn't really recommend it, because ideally, you want to have a light and dark weapon, so I wouldn't recommend that. And I don't think there's really any other good claws available. Basically, the only good claw is Venocleave, and nothing else really, so... You're kind of limited on options, it is a bit more difficult to build this unit, but... Since she can use a sword, it's not that bad as long as you have a good sword option. Then your second weapon can be a dark weapon like Venocleave or the Dark Axe if you have it, or just something dark. 
doesn't have to be a axe, it's just better if it's an axe. So yeah, I think those weapons are fine. Let's have a look at accessories. So this also depends on what you're trying to build her in. So I should probably quickly mention that for weapons. It depends on if you want her to be a light or dark damage dealer because that gets a bit complicated because if you're using a light weapon which increases light physical damage then you're going to want to be doing a light build and using her light skills and not dark but then if you go ahead and use a dark weapon which increases dark damage then you don't really want to do that but the good thing about this axe is it is physical damage so it's not dark physical damage so just remember it really depends on what build you want for her and what content you're using her in we do have quite a lot of good accessories so this is one of those units where accessory options are just very easy to choose so mithril relief very good if you're using a sword which you should more movement speed and skill damage but it's not the best option and the equivalent to that anything that increases skill damage is going to be good world break globus is definitely going to be a very good one because you get 15 percent dark damage this one's nice i would i would definitely consider using it if i was using a dark build so definitely consider that if you're going for a dark build this one light and dark physical damage so this one will apply to both light and dark builds so you can put this on both you can just put this on her permanently and give her 15% more light and dark physical damage so I would definitely recommend to put that on and I'm probably just going to put that on right now just because I think it's pretty perfect allows you to just stick it on and not worry about it this dark mare ring is from the melee mare qr arc i believe it's a very good accessory because you do 15 percent more damage to enemies which have stats ailments and you take 10 percent less physical damage so i would just recommend this one and i would probably consider using that plus the equilibrium sphere and have a setup like this this setup would probably be probably one of the better setups that you could use but there are a couple other ones like this one increases like attack damage and even gives curse and stun resistance so it's a pretty good accessory if you're building for a light damage build this one is pretty good too for a light build pretty much all of these give some ailments so that's pretty nice bonus too black diamond obviously is a good revive accessory if you really want that yeah Amulet of the Vow, I wanted to mention this because resistance to every ailment, this will make her nil to every single ailment, so that's pretty nice. That may be something you might want to think about potentially because resistance to everything, and then you get nil to everything because she's got resistance to everything already. Very nice. Um, yeah, this accessory, this one's very good, I would consider this. Obviously, it's one of the best accessories in the game for damage. But you've got to hit weakness or anti-type damage, which should be easy enough with her because she has the anima, she has ways to reduce resistances, and she has human buster, so you could benefit from this. But just for an easier to use build, you could just use something else, which gives 15% more damage all the time, or 10% is fine. And that's pretty much all the good accessories you are. You do have a lot of good accessory options, so I think it's pretty easy to, you know, pick accessories. It's just more difficult with weapons, so just check what you have on your account first before deciding if you want to get a paid equipment, a paid weapon. If you don't want to get any of the paid weapons, then just check Godforge if you don't have anything, and then check what weapons you have, and just kind of work with what you have. You could use Trishula if you really want to, if you must, but that would imply that you would kind of need a dark sword and we don't really have any of those so you could go with her paid dark sword plus 
Trishula. You could do that. That could be something you could do. So, it's up to you. We do have many build options for this unit, which I think is pretty fun. I'm going to be sticking with this for the moment, with this build, and trying her out with this build very soon. So, yeah. Let's stick her there for the moment. Base skills with that equipment already. Good strength. 2,500. Awaken her as many times as we can, which is only one for the moment. New arch being powers. Yeah. Yeah, she has a lot of build options, and I do think that's what makes her fun of a unit. And the fact that she has ailments and a lot of unique debuffs in her kit is just very good. So you look at her attribute resistance right now. Plus 45 to light. Plus 35 to dark. Because of the accessories and stuff I have on her right now. That gives light, that gives light and dark. It's pretty good. Yeah, she's definitely going to be a very good unit to use. I'm looking forward to using her right now. Let's use her right now. And then, a bit later, I do want to use her in Arena. But, that's going to be a little while. I think it's very fitting to use Melee Mare Arc, for sure. Because you get... More damage cap to enemies with status ailments. Pretty good. So I'm just going to use that for the moment. Actually. Probably to make things simpler. Start with Counselor 10. Just because. I like doing that. For testing at least. So I'm really hoping her damage is good. But obviously it should be. Again. I don't think I want to do this stage. Because. They are human type enemies. So. Let's do this one first. Actually, they might have dark resistance now I'm thinking about it. It's not ideal. Yeah, 50 dark resistance is fine. There is a couple god stages, but they stopped doing those quite a long time ago. Hey, look at these normal attacks. Look at the SCT already. This is already great. Now, normal first skill. It's not going to do a whole lot because they have 50 dark resistance, but I was honestly hoping for more damage than what I'm seeing right now. Look at the SCT though. We can use the special now too. This is already great. Die. That's pretty cool. I mean, she didn't do a whole lot of damage, but... Still. Ah, oh, I already like this. She's upside down. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the other stage next. Against human type enemies, because she's going to do a lot more damage against those enemies. I am still a little bit worried about her damage, because I don't know if she has good damage modifiers on her skills. But I'm hoping, so let's try her here. I didn't really need to use Counselor 10. I didn't even see what her skill stocks were like. But they're pretty good. I haven't tested a normal attack range. But I'm assuming it's long range. It's close range, what it looks like. Yeah, it is. But it's still a pretty good one. Come on, get stunned. I know you want to. Those normal attacks are looking pretty pretty strong. Skill 1. That's more like it. That's what I like to see. 79,000. He has uh, 
dark resistance, so it's not ideal against him. Okay, well, it definitely does a lot more damage against human-type enemies. Man, this is definitely going to be fun to try route in Arena, I can already tell. I need to come up with some kind of team. Let me do this a couple more times, just to mess around a bit. I'm going to use Cancel 10 this time, see her base skill stocks. See her damage without ailments, probably not very much. Okay, so her base skill stocks will be a 4, 4, 3, I think, which is interesting. And what that means is on auto guild battles, she's going to be using her skill 1 most of the time. And her skill 2 probably not so much. Her skill 2 has a lot and her skill 3 has a lot. Skill 1 is kind of average. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. I tell you this right now, uh, in the first guild battle that I'm going to do, I'm going to be using melee in my attack team because she's already going to be built. So, skill 1. Um, I don't see a lot of damage yet. Okay, so if you notice something, her damage was pretty low until... The enemy has a status ailment. Terrible damage. Well, and then the enemy gets a status ailment. Soon. Yeah, he does now. That's why I'm doing more damage. So the status ailments are quite important for a kit. Look at that normal attack though. 70... Okay, I just killed him with a normal attack. Okay, sure. Uh... I didn't mean to do that. That was an accident, but... Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the unit test play quest. Yeah. Because I have a light and dark weapon... Hmm. The light weapon was doing a lot of damage. She might... I'm hoping she's a problem because... Then I can get her to plus 30. Please. <laughs> I really want to. Not yet. i tell you what I'm going to do in a bit. Is when I try her in Arena. I'm going to be seeing what her damage is like and everything. And her performance. If it's good. If it's impressive. Then I will definitely want to get her to plus 30. So let's do a standard battle first. Reason why is because of, you know, she can still get SCT easily. Let's see, she should definitely hit damage cap against this boss, because it should be a human enemy, weak to dark, she should be hitting damage cap no problem, which... Okay, let's see how much one normal attack does. And the range of it is obviously not the best. One normal attack, already got silence. And I've already got skill one. 80,000. <laughs> uh, there's stun and that's exanguinate good so now it's going to do even more right well even more damage not the damage cap skill 3 I like skill 1 the most you can tell why I'm spamming it a lot this is base skills with paid equipment those normal attacks look at that damage and the normal attacks this is already great you can increase her damage cap even further with obviously damage cap skills and arc traits and equipment. Yeah, you may need to consider. Look at all these debuffs Silent, Stun, Illness, Curse, Blind, Cut, Ailment, Resistance, Cut, Blind, Resistance, Cut, Illness, Resistance, Exanguinate. Wait, Cut, Blind, Resistance, where's that from? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember, I, I really don't. 5,000 strength. Sure. 
One of us girls, well, I really don't remember because I thought I wouldn't mention it. Um, cause that's even better. It's even better. Okay, well, I, I don't know yet. Cutting blind and illness resistance. And all resistance. <laughs> ha. So now she's got not getting any more ailments because... Well, not any more SCT because the ailments has already been inflicted once on the enemy. So... Yeah, this is funny. I like this a lot. This is great. I'm just going to kill him with normal attacks or something. Uh, normal attacks are pretty solid, honestly. It's not the same as V, I know. Can't compete against V's normal attacks, but it's still pretty good. Now I'm going to do the other unit test play quest with max skills and special but it's gonna be the same thing i just want to try again and i definitely want to try arena soon but not yet minus three to blind and illness will be very funny so let's do this one i'm trying to remember what gives blind because silence it's not any of the Equipments. She has silence research. Well, you don't really need to worry about it because if there's usually more than one enemy. Yeah, the trait one is for illness. I remember that for sure. But where's the cut blind debuff? I don't remember seeing that unless chance to give enemy blind. Yeah, but with the cut blind resistance T buff, I swear I don't remember seeing that somewhere at all. Because I thought I would have mentioned that already. Unless I'm crazy, which I'm probably crazy. Chance to give enemy blind, yeah, but the enemy doesn't do damage. Is it, like, that makes it even better, technically, because it's not in a kit, is it? Not that I can see it, does silence, not any other weapons, not in a trait, it's nowhere. Unless they did a typo, they must have done a typo. With skill, one, blind, chance to give blind, chance to give, probably one of the ways that has a chance to give blind is a typo or something. Let's try and actually notice when the enemy gets blind, cut blind resistance debuff, because that's important. Yes, it should but i haven't paid attention to that yet because she has a lot blind resistance down instead of dark resistance i would be laughing if that was the case okay so there is the cut illness resistance debuff And there is the other debuff of cut blind resistance. Yeah, the that's probably what happens. I think the cut the dark resistance debuff is the cut blind resistance debuff instead. That has to be the case. If I just keep spamming S1, you're going to see... I haven't seen the cut dark resistance debuff. There's only the blind resistance debuff. Which is, um... I still think it's good. I still think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it. Let's use the special. That's 
pretty nice. Doesn't do many hits, but it flick inflicted exanguinate. And now if I use the skill one. Yeah, they that that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but someone needs to tell them that their typos are incredibly stupid. So if I now spam skill one, which could only originally inflict blind. Since the enemy has Exanguinate, she should be able to inflict other ailments. Blind Illness, Silence. There you go. There's no stun, obviously. Only those three ailments at the moment. At the moment, only three ailments. She can only inflict stun from the, um, the research skill. So her research skill. Yeah, the nightmare trio thing. Stupid. Yeah, there's curse from the skill three. Then if I do a normal attack, should get stun. There's stun. Okay, I see. Her normal attacks are more reliable for inflicting ailments than her skills, which makes sense. Because she does have more research skills. Might as well finish this guy off now. Well, 80k damage cap is actually pretty good. I like that. Yeah, because Nightmare Trio. Poison, Dark, Silence, Curse, Illness, Stun. Supposed to be. Poison, Blind, Silence, Curse, Illness, Stun. How could they mix up those two words? Are they dumb? Or, I, I don't know, probably translation something. I don't know. I really want to try her out in Arena, like right now, so... Yeah, well... But, what I don't get is... Chance to give targeted enemy a cut dark resistance debuff. I mean... Instead of cut illness resistance... Cut dark resistance... I mean, yeah... The word dark just needs to be illness... Blind instead of dark but what I also don't get is why is the word blind here like they know what blind is they could have just put this word and instead of dark and fine you could just copy paste this word and just put it here I don't know <laughs> it's fine okay what I want to do now I do definitely want to start preparing her for arena soon, like now, so I need to get some materials, but I'm worried that I don't have enough. I think I do. I do end up using the green ones more than anything else. I need... I don't know why I've only got 10 of these. I really need to start doing auto farming again because I need more of these very soon, like now. I, I really should get some of those. I don't know why I don't have many. Skill books are fine. There's just these purple books always been a problem. So, I'm going to be teaching mainly her sixth enhanced skills and then start building up properly I think for arena and stuff I think that'd be fun
This is always the first one I get. I don't think I'm going to worry about special damage cap for now. But I definitely want to at least get the strength and the skill damage caps. And the HP and the less magic damage taken I think will be useful too. So trying to get everything. That will do for now, I think it's fine. Pretty much everything I need, it's apart from special, because I never really worry about that. So, this is pretty much everything. I'm going to be using just as many Mother Souls as I can to get her maxed right now. And then we can try wrapping Arena, because I think that'll be fun. So the good thing about this is I've learnt every skill on her already, so we can already use her properly. That's going to be great. So, I'm trying to think of a good team that would work with melee. Right now, I'm probably going to keep this team the same and adjust this one. Welcome. And then put on melee. Well... Arena has had a update a couple months or so ago, and a lot of people didn't like it. I th think it was not the best update. I'm trying to think of what arc I should use on her, honestly. I'm not sure yet. Probably not. She's dark or light. Which one do I want to do? Probably dark maybe I don't know if it matters um actually I'm gonna go for a dark build I'm gonna go for a dark build first with this arc because I know it's very good and then start building Properly. Might as well put on everything. I still enjoy Arena because I like the um, strategy and building teams. It's like the most fun I have with this game. It's building teams, messing around with units, seeing how they perform is just the most fun I have with it. I'm not competitive with PvP, that just ruins it for me all the time. I just like having fun with it. So, that's why I still enjoy it. But some people that are competitive with PvP probably just get burnt out from it, but I don't do that. I make sure that's not the case, because if I were to just try hard in PvP, I just won't enjoy it, so... Don't try hard in PvP content. That's what I recommend. So, I think for... The first thing that I want to do is try a dark build with full damage. So... Let's go through all these skills and go for full damage. Well, she is a shift form, right? And she, I, you can teach the original form skills, and since it's a shift, you can just, it's the same unit, so you can just use that. I'm thinking, do I want to use Rena for a healer or not? For the moment, I won't. But we'll have to see how it does first. Full damage. Besties. My plan is to spam her skill 1. First of all. Braver doggy dog, yeah. Yeah, because saintly melee and advocate god melee. I don't think backstab skills will be very useful. Decoy must have that. Every single skill charge is a... Probably why not. Don't need quick trigger. Um, I'm going to be using... 
have both her paid agreements. So, sword boost will be very useful for sure. Axe boost, yes. Axe high boost, maybe, but it's only 25%, not 30, so for now I'm just going to go with this. I don't know if she does rear attacks well. I could test that. I might. Um, piercing? I don't think so. Beast repellent is useful. Meg Do I want Megalodon? I, I don't think so. I'm going to put on backstab just to see if it does proc at least. So I tell you what I do is I put on every skill I want and obviously I know it's going to be too much SC but it just gives me an idea of what skills I want and the SC costs and everything. She's going to be dark, I could put on shadow and symbol, have a dark team with Freya. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment, I'm going to do that at some point later. Now it's going to be more expensive, but I'm just doing this because it's a lot easier this way. Pride, Awaken, maybe. Speed, she doesn't have speed, but because she's got close the gap skill one, I don't think it's necessary. Empty Brave is nice. I don't think I'm really going to be using normal attacks very much. Anything else I'm missing? Don't think so. Maybe. Uh, yeah, crit, crit skills. I'm going to have a couple of these. And then I'm going to decide what I want to remove afterwards, which is usually the attack raise skills. That's everything I want for now. So now let's go through them and see what I can remove that I don't really need. I definitely think the ones that I remove most of the time are the Dark Attack Raise and Rise and Drive skills because they're just a bit too expensive for PvP. Dark High Drive is good, but I can never really fit in that 11 SC. It's probably better than Dark Drive, though. Maybe remove Sky High 2 and try and fit in Dark High Drive somehow. If that's even a good idea. Maybe not. I just stick with this then. It's just fine for the moment. 108 SC. Put on critical up one, and there you go. That's the build for the moment, and now equipment is going to be two. Both her paid weapons with a revive accessory and a accessory for damage is my plan for the moment. I'm really hoping her damage is strong. That's what I really want to be the case. Wood break Globus or Equilibrium Sphere. I'll just go Equilibrium Sphere and then the, the other one can be Revive Accessory and then we'll see how it goes. But what I expect to happen is she's probably going to die against counter units for sure. I don't know if she can be single wield is the question. But is that even a good idea? Probably not. Let's just try and see what happens, I guess. Because I don't really know what's going to happen. I really want to see high damage numbers. I know she's not going to do very well against Guile. But I expect that to happen. Turn off auto, don't I'm too late. I'm pressing the button. Okay. 
Um, don't know who killed that. I couldn't tell. It's hard to tell. You know, I should probably use Renner to make everything a lot easier. Okay, this is not going well because I just can't be fast enough on the computer. Um, hard to see what's going on. I'd I don't think she's doing well, but it's hard to tell. I know, it's always hard to tell what's happening. I'd never tell. Yeah, the damage is not great, that's what I'm seeing at the moment. Which I kind of expected, but Guile, I'm gonna go suicide into Guile. Mm. You know, I think our main value is gonna be in guild battles, if I'm honest. Yeah, 9S is just killing them instead. This is not the best showcase. This is like the worst. Oh, come on, fit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use a different team then. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a different plan and go for a full ailment. Well, a full team focused on only her damage. But... She didn't really do much, but uh, after C. So I'm thinking fit in Rena just because it's helpful. Don't use 9S because I don't think I just want to showcase only melee's damage in this one. You can just use healing, because why not? It's fine. I don't know if I want Eliza or not. Kind of not really. Because I'd rather just have someone buffing melee. If I can. Like, uh... Lelouch could work. And then I can go in again to see how it does, but... There's always the option of using V for ailments too, to help with that, but then he steals the procs of paranoia. Could just use another tank as well. I don't think it matters too much. I'll just go with Leluch then for the moment, because he's a good support. And it doesn't really need to be do anything, it just needs to be there and exist. So I'm gonna try this a couple times, but I'm pretty sure her damage isn't that crazy. But I kind of expected that to happen, if I'm honest. She's gonna die because of Claude, I expected that. Uh-huh. I need Renna to cast when she can, but that's not going to happen, because Splinch. Um, she should be able to flinch Claude, because she's a god type. Yeah. That was Mikasa doing that. It's just because she gets sniped and she just dies instantly, that's the problem. Let's see what happens here. Nothing. Can you heal for once? If I attack Guile right now, I'm just gonna die. But for science, I don't know what happens. Um. Can you do something? Let's use the anima. Haven't been using that. We're probably gonna die first, anyways. Kill stuff, please. I think that was good. <laughs> Hard to tell. 
So the problem is, if I attack Guile, she's just going to instantly die, so I don't... She's not going to work against a Guile at all. She can work against... Okay, that was not bad. It's okay. It's okay. You know, I want to suicide into Guile again, but it, I know it's a dumb idea. Hey, he's got curse. Huh. Fine. Oh. I actually killed a Guile. Well, yeah, kind of similar to Diablo, but the ailments do help. Let's do a one of these. Never mind, Claude just sniped my face. Sad. So, the ailments do help a lot. I keep getting sniped from Claude, that's the problem, and I'm gonna die now, but. I at least wanna see the damage numbers. If I attack him, he's gonna kill me. I should attack you. I think her performance is going to be better in guild battles, if I'm honest. Um, I kind of want to attack one of those, but I'm going to die. Screw it, YOLO. Let's have a, have a look, because I don't know what happens. So, huh. so, the damage is not terrible, honestly, it's okay, but the problem is she does need to have ailments on the enemy to be able to do good damage. Without ailments, the enemy just, she just can't kill enemies very well, but what I didn't test is how she does against tanks. She did manage to kill Guile, but that was only because he had curse inflicted on him. And now what that makes me think of is the fact that she can attack Guile and then Guile will kill her, right? But that will make her trait to proc and then inflict two random basic stats elements on Guile. If one of those happens to be curse and if it does inflict him a curse, then that could, you know, kind of prevent Guile from doing his trait counters because he can't get SET when he has Curse. So there's at least some potential there. And I can't play very well on my computer because I'm used to playing Last Cloud on my phone. So I think coming up with a better team and messing around with her a bit more, I could probably make her perform decent. Um, it's not super impressive yet, but I do need to do more, some more testing. Well, I swear I remembered trying out once, right? And I swear when I had Curse that he didn't get any SAT. I swear that was the case. I, I made a note of it in my memory that that happens. I'm pretty sure I remember that happening before. I'm going to try... I mean... I swear I tested that too, and it was the opposite, but I don't know. Let's try attacking some random people, because I do want to test her out against a variety of units. So... She should be able to kill Vayne, at least when he doesn't guard. And I don't get flinched by a blizzard here. Yeah. Her damage is not that impressive. I, this is what I'm seeing right now. I'm going to use this skill instantly. Okay. Not terrible. Kill you. Um, I'll try. Oh yeah, Mikasa is immune to flinch when she has her buff, I'm just remembering that. Um... 
You know, the damage isn't terrible as long as she has an element on the enemy. I mean, it is terrible. For... Stop this. Mm, I don't know. Yet. I swear if I attack 2p... Actually, there's a very there's a very small chance that I could stun 2p if I go over there and normal attack her. So you know what? I'm going to go and roll the dice. It happened. It worked. <laughs> now I can kill her. <laughs> and that's the good thing about melee. She can do that. Great. Um, she's gonna kill me. I know that. Go. Yeah, that happens most of the time. <laughs> but you know... What I'm seeing here is not good arena potential, but more of good PV uh, guild battle potential. That's what I'm seeing. Because she can't even kill a vein right now, which is sad, but... Probably because he had no ailments. Kind of needs normal attack and then skill. Where you know where you do that, where you normal attack and then use a skill, is usually in guild battles, so... That's where I really think she'll shine, is guild battles. Right now, Vayne has no status ailments. That's why Melee's not doing a whole lot of damage, because no status ailments. Then I inflict the status ailment on him soon, right now. Never mind, he's dead. Um, okay. That was fun, though. I am kind of understanding this unit a bit more. So, it seems like her damage without a, uh, ailments on the enemy is just very low. But when the enemy has at least one status element, her damage goes a lot higher. But it isn't super amazing. And I'm assuming against tanks, she probably won't do very well. But I haven't been attacking tanks. So I do kind of want to try and find a tank team to see how it performs against. But I don't know what my expectations are, if I'm honest. Against, you know, I haven't tried her against a Gilbert yet. And... I'm going to assume against a Gilbert she should do very well, because ailments and Gilbert's Fulminator buff should be good, I would think. And I can keep flinching Claude like that, easily enough. That's pretty nice. That was good. Um... Okay. I don't know what I just heard. That was a death scream. Okay. Weird. It's not bad. I do want to attack Gilbert, but Giles was literally right there. So I'm going to have to try and stun him or something. Which doesn't happen. This is not ideal. The only reason is because Gilbert's there. Well, Guile's there. And Gilbert's there too. Okay, YOLO. Yeah, that, the only reason I'm dying is because of... Guile. She doesn't work against Guile unless... She can inflict... Stun, which most of the time she won't. Hey, still trying her out. She isn't super impressive in Arena, if I'm honest. But, it's not terrible. I mean, if you're just doing this against a guy like what I'm doing, I'm obviously going to die instantly. Hey, look, guy was stunned. That's interesting. That's funny. This may waste a bunch of time, but... Ren is trying to heal Guile, who can't currently be healed anymore because he's got stunned and he's got illness. Look at all those ailments on Guile right now. Silence, blind, poison, illness, stun. <laughs> he's just going to die if I press this button. There you go. That's what you need to do to prevent a Guile, is stun him and just prevent him from doing anything. 
I do want to kill you. Yeah, it, it, the only problem is Guile. That's the only problem I'm having with melee. Other units are fine, but what I'm considering is in guild battles you could just use melee plus clawed and you may be fine so you don't have any stats how much on you yet but you will do about now yes you got curse okay now you now you're dead there you go, that's basically what it is. Once they've got one status element, then they're basically dead. That was pretty nice. Obviously Guile just ruins everything for me. That's... It's annoying. I can't kill Gilbert because he's right next to Guile. And Melee doesn't... can't deal with Guile. That was nice. So her damage numbers are not great, which does tell me that her damage modifiers in general are just not that great. But I do still think she's going to be good. Like, she's doing something there. Uh, but definitely can't compete against, you know, the highest damage dealers we got. Um, I do want to try attacking, like... Uh, Tank focus team. Maybe um See everyone with Guile is maybe fine, maybe potentially. Anyone with Guile is just a problem for melee, I think. Unless you use Claude to take him out. That may be you know what, that may be a combo or synergy where you use melee. Guile kills melee. Claude has Terra Mouth. Well, you put Terra Mouth 1 and 2 on Claude to increase his damage. And then kills Guile. Uh, maybe. Just thinking about it. Okay, you're... Magic's just annoying me. So, go get stunned, please. Or something. You should die easily. Yeah. So, Gilbert. I just want to see how much damage Melee can do against her, him, because. Should be good, in a theory. Obviously, the only issue is Zekka's doing magic right now Claude's gonna kill me I knew that yeah she's definitely not tanky whatsoever ah uh. Okay, well, I didn't really target the tanks that time, but she's very squishy. She doesn't, she can't tank very well. I discovered that. Um, 41k, you know, it's not terribly terrible, but it's something, I guess. Okay. Well, I think... In guild battles, that's where she's going to perform better. Because that allows her to get SCT from her normal attacks and inflicting ailments. And that, I believe she's going to have more value in guild battles. So for that reason, I do think her performance is going to be pretty good. But only guild battles. Arena so far just doesn't seem that great to me. Tupi and Guile is the biggest problem for her, for sure, but I have seen 
that she can kill Guile only when Guile has been stunned. But that, that's obviously that makes sense because can't do much if you're stunned, can you? Hey, look, two P was stunned, so she's gonna die. Almost. She doesn't have Machine Slayer equipped, so... Yeah, she doesn't do a whole lot of damage, if I have to say that. She can't even kill a 2P, but... Now she did. It just takes a while. Guile's gonna be the problem, I might as well just suicide into him. Uh, I think he died. I, I couldn't really tell what happened. <laughs> yeah, it's only the counters are killing me, which is okay, I think. You can just go on auto guild battles. She would go up to them and do a normal attack. And then they got ailments, so... Two piece now stunned. Guile has silence and curse. So, this is good. <laughs> She's actually doing something against these now. That's pretty good. I do like this. Now she's gonna die. That's expected. She's kind of like a suicide... element unit. Against those... So if, if you want to kill a 2P with a melee, all you got to do is go up to a 2P and a normal attack, 2P, and hope you, you stun her. Because if you don't, then you're, you're dead. So you've got to play the lottery here. I hope you win. And you, you lose. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. I'm not doing this like... Um, to see her highest performance, I'm just messing around, seeing what we'll think how it does. Come on, stun now, do it. Stun, maybe, maybe. No. I know you want to. Just do it. Yay! <laughs> now kill you. <laughs> it, it's still fun. But Guile's... 2P's going towards Guile, and then Guile's going to slap my face with his fist. Which I don't like very much. Don't approve of that. If I'm honest. I'm waiting for... Oh, never mind. Yeah. So, Melee does not do very much damage against 2P. Which makes sense. But, she can kill a 2P when 2P is stunned. But it takes a lot of skills. So, melee damage is not that high. It's kind of not, not the best, but... Against, in PvE content, I do think she's going to be hitting pretty hard. In PvP though, in Arena she may not be the best unit to use for Arena. But I am hoping that her performance is better in Guild Battles. I'm still considering getting her to plus 30, but I'm going to be doing some more testing later on because I do better testing on my phone than on computer because I'm not used to playing this. So I do want to mess around with a couple more teams and just some more ideas for her. So I'm going to leave it there because otherwise I'll be here for hours and I feel like I've been here long enough. It's almost dinner time too, surprisingly. You know, I've done a lot today. So, I think that's all the testing I can do for now. That I want to do for this stream. I don't think there's anything else I want to do yet. Guild battles, matchmaking for another two hours. Okay. I didn't notice she has those little fire things coming out. That's cool. Great. 
Okay. So, I don't think there's anything else I want to do today. I think that was pretty fun. Um, I know what I'm going to be doing later. Later today, I'm just going to be messing around by myself, uh, trying her out in Arena. I also want to adjust my guild battles, forts, and stuff, and, you know, just mess around with melee on my attack team as well, but I'm assuming I'm probably going to have a similar build to what I used in Arena, maybe, but a bit, bit different. In Arena, I did focus on her damage as much as possible, but it wasn't really doing a whole lot. One thing I didn't try yet was her with light damage skills. Chances are that they both have the same damage modifiers and it doesn't really matter too much what element you use for PvP, but a bit different in guild battles, I guess. Depends. Uh, and in PvE as well. So, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Sadly, the next stream is going to be in about two weeks because there isn't much going on between now and the next unit, which will be in two weeks, which I believe that should be around when the anniversary starts. So, look forward to the anniversary because that's coming up very soon. We do have an anniversary countdown login bonus, which doesn't really give a whole lot, but does imply that in two weeks there should be the anniversary, I think. I'm interested to see what they're bringing in the anniversary, but my guess at the moment is going to be a bunch of DOH units and UR arcs. So, definitely going to be DOH units and UR arcs. They're probably going to have a UR arc guaranteed banner. Potentially, if they are feeling generous, they're going to give a guaranteed UR arc ticket to select one. And maybe a ticket to select a unit or something and some crystals and things, it's always a good time in the anniversary. What I'm hoping for the most in the anniversary, if I'm being honest, is just more quality of life updates and just more updates regarding the content that's going to be added to the game and just how they are going to progress arena and stuff because right now a lot of in-game players are complaining about not much content and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave it there. My conclusion for today is I do think melee is going to be a very good unit for PvE if you can inflict ailments, but there are a lot of bosses which do have do have nil to every ailment, so she may not get much usage in the more earlier, newer bosses. But in PvP, her damage isn't super high. In Arena, I tried her out a bit today, and her damage was okay, but it wasn't super impressive. But I do like her ailments, and her debuffs do seem pretty good, so I do think her ailments can make her pr a promising, good, strong unit for PvP. But I just don't think she's going to be a main damage dealer. She definitely not got the best damage, but I kind of expected that when I was getting into this unit, because I remember Advocate God Melee also didn't have that much damage, but she was mostly focused on ailments, so it's a similar story, but maybe I'll be wrong and her damage is still good but at least what i've seen today her damage isn't that crazy i'll definitely do more testing later and we'll probably talk about her performance in the next stream which will be in two weeks depending on that i may try and do a video or something in between then but i do have some things going on because i need to do work and stuff but i think she'll be very fun and a very decent unit especially for ailment she's going to be a little bit of a problem if you don't worry about ailments then she will become a problem but if you build for ailment resists then she should probably die quite easily and not be a problem I'm, that's what i'm seeing at the moment but what i'm curious about is what is her performance with a full 130 se build and full damage and stuff like that and single wield i've got to test those things out and i'll probably let you know next time there's a new unit which would be in two weeks from now. The arc, there isn't much to say about the arc. I think it would be a nice arc to have, but I'm not going to be pulling for it, and nobody should be pulling for it because it's an SSR arc. You can hopefully get it from the permanent ticket gacha or even free single pools from the single pools that we are being given daily. Or even the anniversary, you could get it from the anniversary free pools because usually 
they do give free temples each day in the anniversary for a while, which is good because you have a chance to get the new SSR arc and maybe Shift Logia or Shift Val or some good unit like sh even Shift Gorm's great. So I do recommend to save for them. But if you do like Melee, there's nothing wrong with pulling for her now. She's still going to be a great unit and she's definitely still one of my favorite units. So I'm still looking forward to doing some more testing with her. I'm just wishing that she had a bit high damage for PvP, but maybe she is what I was thinking, where she can't be a main damage dealer, but she can help with killing the weaker enemies and inflicting ailments and inflicting debuffs. That's probably her main role. I think she won't really work as a main damage dealer. She might, but I might have to test more on that. So I'm going to leave it there today. It's been about 2 hours 40 minutes of me talking. Just because this is one of those units where I just think she's very exciting and a very fun unit. So, I think that's it for me. I do like this update, even though they haven't had a whole lot in this update. The only reason is because it's melee. And this art design is just very good. Her kit's very good. Definitely need to do more testing with this. But yeah, I'll leave that there for now. And I will be adding the timestamps a bit later because I got to have dinner very soon. So yeah, I'll see you in about two weeks, because that should be the next unit, and probably the anniversary. Also, Easter is coming up very soon. I don't think Adis has any planned Easter events or anything, but try to have fun with Easter. I don't really celebrate it very much. It's just chocolate and whatever. I don't really celebrate it. It's coming up soon, but yeah. I'll see you in the next one, which should be in about two weeks. I'll have the timestamp soon, but yeah. Thanks for coming, and...